the types of panels here in our building. We have about 220 panels of this kind. That's the majority. We do have eight panels floating around of this kind. Most of you have the standard um, IR touch. That just means that when you touch the panel, it responds to your fingers. And the way it's working is it has a whole bunch of little, they're kind of like cameras going all the way around the outside here in this little lip. If you feel there's a little lip. Um, and they're actually like lasers that shoot back and forth. And then when you put your finger or arm or shirt in the line of the cameras, it responds. It, it knows that there's something there and that's how it knows what to select because of your physical cutting the, you know, signal. You can tell that that's, it's that kind because they are on the stands that have a shelf. Um, right now we're focusing on the Android side, which I'll show you what that is in a minute. But there is the onboard computer. I have them installed on all of them. We just haven't set up the computer yet. We haven't imaged it yet, but that's coming for next year. And then some of them already have a document camera. So if you go do that survey and you want a document camera, just mark in there that you want one and I'll make sure you get, uh, get something to use for your classroom. The other model um, is different. It's capacitive touch. So if you see one of those, it's actually on one of those fancy stands that you can Put it into a table. These went all special education rooms. They're working the same as these pretty much, except uh, if you look at the edge of those, the glass goes all the way to the edge. There's no little lip on them because those are doing capacitive touch. So it's actually sensing your finger wherever you touch on the glass. It's sensing that you've touched it. You won't even notice a difference between them, but they are slightly different. Power supply and troubleshooting for power. Power is kind of a simple thing, but I'm going to go over it anyway. So these have a power cord that's plugged in, in the back. So if you go to run your panel and it's not turning on, check that it's plugged into the wall. Check that the wall that you plugged into is slide. Check that <laughs> this is plugged all the way into the panel. It's right. It's almost towards the center of the back. The power button is right here. But notice right now, there's no light on it, no color at all. It's still not getting power, okay? This panel is still not getting power because there's also a master power switch. So that master power switch is right next to, to the left of where you plugged in this cord in the back. So if you just reach up there and flick it on, now you can see I have a red light. So the red light here means that this panel is not on, but it's receiving power. So now if you want to turn it on, you can. Turn it on, press the button lightly. If you press and hold too long, or if you press in one of the corners, sometimes the button will get stuck in the casing and then your um, panel is going to work weird. It's going to be a problem. So just check, check that. That's another um, troubleshooting because a lot of people like to press things real hard. This one doesn't need any kind of hard touch, just a light, light touch is fine <laughs> to turn it on. So, the device will turn on and it's automatically going to be on the Android side. So you notice it looks like an iPad or a phone having apps here along the front. So now if I want this to sleep because I don't want it flashing right now, I want to do something else with the kids in my room. I just want it to sleep so it'll come back on fast. I just hit this button quickly and it's sleeping right now. And I know that it's sleeping. When I look at this button here, the light is flashing between red and white. So that's telling me that it's in sleep mode. It's actually, the board is still on. It's still getting hot, receiving power. You don't want to leave it in sleep mode 24 seven. And then to actually power it down, you actually are going to hold, it's just like a projector. You hold the button lightly, don't press hard and make sure you're in the middle until this comes up. And now you can just let it count down the time if you want, or if you want it to go faster, tap okay and it will shut down. Okay, so now, now that it's shut down, when it's completely done, it'll be solid red, so you know it's off, and touching the board isn't going to turn it back on. To turn it back on, you have to go and press the power button. Some teacher tips that I got from teachers who have been using this, um, a lot of them like to actually turn the power off, the main switch back here, so that kids don't know about it, it's kind of a secret switch, so then they don't touch it when they're not around, like when you have a sub. Four people per board, split yourself up, 
I want you guys to go see, they're, they're set up in different ways. I want you to see if you can get them to turn on and get to the screen right here. Some of them are plugged in, some of them are not. Some of them have to switch on, some of them don't. If you figure out how to get your board on, make sure everybody in your group know how to put it to sleep and make sure they know how to put it down. I want everybody to get a feel for that button. So make sure everybody in your group tries it. You have two more minutes to play with the power. Make sure you know where that master power switch is in the back. Make sure you check out where it plugs in so that if yours gets unplugged, you can plug it back in yourself. Okay, you got 22 seconds left at this little activity. And then I'm gonna want your attention back. Time's up, you hear the times? So this panel has a few little tricks built in. This is the timer and it does do a chime where you can change the sound if you want. So you can get your kids' attention. So if they're doing an activity and you want to get their attention back and they know the time is up because they hear first the time was almost up and it's probably going to ring again. And... Oh no, it's counting up now. So you as a teacher can see how long it took for you to get the class back on track and paying attention to it. So, and then you can tell the class, hey, you got it. It took two minutes for you to stop talking and get your attention up here. We gotta do better than that or whatever it is. The question was, how do I get to that tool? There's a little button on the side here. It's actually on this side and on that side, okay? When you tap on it, a bar comes up. The third one from, the bottom they look like tools a hammer and a wrench so if you tap on that we've got some tools there and the one i was using was countdown you can set the time any way you want you can have the ring on or off if you want then when you click start you also get the option to make this full screen to get out of full screen you just tap where the arrows are like all pointing in so the next thing i want to talk about is the care and maintenance of your panel you don't want to use just any old thing and go and squirt the panel. You have potential of ruining the screen. So only use electronics cleaner. The hundred boards that were here, all those people should have a little kit and then that nice soft cloth. The other thing you want to make sure you don't do is have water collecting down. Like you don't want to spray and then spray so much that it all drips down into your little cameras down here. They are pretty well protected, but water and electronics don't go well together so when you spray it's better to spray on the cloth or if you're going to spray here to wipe directly be ready to wipe it off whole bunch of different ways to connect and i'm going to recommend certain ways but if you want to connect a different way be my guest use it the way that works best for you the way i recommend connecting is to use the board as a standalone so that you're not tied to it you're not you're not um, mirroring, you're not doing anything, you're just using the board itself. That's actually the easiest way because then you have the computer free for things like taking attendance, grading, whatever you might be doing while the kids are doing their own activity. There are two ways to use this as a standalone. Right now, the only way you have as an option is the Android side, which is what we're on right now. Jerry will be setting up the computers. And when those are ready, we'll do another training. The, co the computer, onboard computer, gives your panel superpowers. You guys think they're awesome now? Wait till you see what they can do once they have the computer and the software that goes with the computer. You'll be amazed. Another way you can do it is to hardwire to your Mac. So they all came with a little box of stuff. So in here, there are two cables. This one is an HDMI cable. Let's say you're doing something that you can't get on the Android side. You can connect directly. This will do video where you can see the screens will match and the sound. So the sound will come out of those speakers. So HDMI cable, you need to make sure you have an HDMI dongle and then it's the C is the other end for you to go to your computer. Now, if you want to hardwire and you wanna be able to control your computer from here, then what you have to do is connect this one, but also connect this one. One end is USB, like the normal that you're used to. And the other end, is also USB, but the square. So what this cable will do is if you connect this to your computer with the dongle that came with it, the other end would go into your clear touch panel. And you want to make sure you plug it into the same, the 
you look on the side, so everybody check out the panels on the side, you'll see that there's HDMI 1 and HDMI 2 and HDMI 3. And then there's touch 1 and touch 2. So you want to make sure that your touch, which is the blue on the side of the panel, is the same number as the HDMI you put in there so that they match. And then you'll be able to touch the screen and control the computer. This screen will become your computer. So it'll essentially turn your computer into a touch screen. But you need both cables attached for that um, to work. Third way, and I think this number three, right now I think is going to be the most popular way that teachers connect. And that's where you mirror your Mac directly to the clear touch. So to mirror your Mac, so if you look up at the top, see these two little, they look like switches. Everybody see that? Okay. So if I click on the two little switches, I get this menu here, a whole bunch of things I can do. One of them is screen mirroring. So if I click on screen mirroring, I then get a list of everything I could mirror to. When I go and set it up, I also add a sticker so you know which room it is in case it gets put into another room. You'll know which one to pick. So if you scroll down the list, I click on 610B. It's asking me if I want to accept. I have that turned on on purpose. So if you turned it off in your class, I highly suggest you go turn on permissions again because you don't want somebody else to accidentally bump you off. And if you see this come up and it wasn't you, you can reject it. But if it was you, you hit accept and then your screen will be up. To stop mirroring, you just go and uh, click on it again and it turns it off. That's how you airplay. So the things about the airplay, to mirror from your Mac, number one, this and your computer have to be on the same Wi-Fi. What Wi-Fi are these on? Private. private. If you don't have access to private, just put in the help desk ticket and we will get it added to your computer. If it's not working for you, restart both devices. Restart your clear touch and restart your computer and try again. Because sometimes, you know, signals get stuck in the cloud. And by restarting, we can clear that back up. So the last way is the collage software. Those of you who got your clear touch at the beginning of the school year probably have collage on your computer now. And you prob that's probably what you've been using. I personally don't see much difference between the collage software and mirroring the computer. So I'm not recommending people to use it. Uh, but if you really want it, you can put in a help desk ticket and ask for it to be installed on your computer. Basically, once it's installed on your computer, when you open it, it then asks you for a code. And the way I've had have every one of these boards set up is the code will always be showing on top. No matter what you're doing, that code is going to be there. So you just type in the code and it should mirror. Quick review. I recommend you choosing the standalone way of using it. For now, it's just the actual Android side of the board. Later, it'll be the onboard computer once that's set up. But if you want a hard wire, you can. If you want a mirror, you can. If you want to use collage software, you can. This is what I think is the best way to access your materials in Google Classroom. I know there's a built-in browser here. It's the one that looks like an earth. But it's best if you have use the Google Chrome browser. Most, if not all, of your clear touch boards should have a browser. If not, you can go grab it yourself at the clear touch store, which is right here. When you open it, if you see a black screen, that's okay. It just means there's no tabs open. So you can see up here um, on the left, there's a plus sign um, that allows you to open a new tab. I actually added bookmarks for Google Classroom. So to access the bookmarks, you would come over here to these three dots and you can see right here bookmarks. And then you'll notice that I put Google Classroom as a bookmark. Um, and then you just tap on it to open Google Classroom. The reason why I chose to use Google Classroom is because it will always give you the little waffle looking symbol that gives you access to all your Google apps. And I'll show you that in a minute. So let's sign in first. So I'm gonna sign into my Google account. Notice the keyboard is huge. Uh, and you don't really wanna type your password in in front of people. So what you can do, a couple of things. You could use a keyboard that's plugged in. You could use a wireless keyboard. I do have them for the staff. We'll make sure we get these out to you as soon as we can. Or you could shrink this key.
keyboard down to as small as it will go. All I do is pinch with my fingers. See, pinch big, pinch small. Now it's a lot smaller, so now you can kind of use your body to hide the keyboard. The other thing you want to do is even if you end up using another keyboard, you're still going to want to cover your password because if you see here, when I type letters, they appear. So if a kid is paying attention and watching you type, they're going to know what your password is. Okay, so to fix that little issue, if you just take your keyboard and drag it over where the password slot is, then they can't see it. So now, either using your body or the keyboard, you can type in your password securely. All right, now I mentioned the little waffle-like symbol that allows you to access all your Google apps is right here. So if I tap on that, I have access to all my apps. The other thing that I like about um, using Google Classroom as my landing point is that if you tap on your picture or whatever you have here, initials, then this comes up and it gives you an easy way to sign out, which you want to make sure you do every time you leave the board by itself. You don't want to leave your account signed in. Otherwise, anybody could come into here and get to all your stuff, okay? Your drive, anything you keep in here, they would be able to see. Once you're in, Google Classroom, you're good to go. Now you can show people in your class uh, your stuff. A couple of tips for Google Classroom. For everything I do, I like to add it, mostly everything, unless it's a, just a resource that's going to be used all year long. Um, but for mostly everything I do, I add them as an assignment, whether I'm going to grade it or not. I add it as an assignment because then what happens is you can pick the due date, you can say if it's graded or not by putting how many points. You can decide who it's assigned to. Once it's in there, when a student opens this up, this is a, my, the teacher view, but on the student view, they can actually say that they did it. So like, let's say it was a video you wanted them to watch, or let's say it was a resource you wanted them to look at. They can check off that they did indeed look at it so that they uh, know that they finished all the stuff that you were asking them to do. So it's like a checklist. And the other thing that's nice about it is that it will appear in their Google Calendar. Whatever assignment you put in there, if you put a date, either the date created or the date it's due, it'll appear in this Google Calendar. So if all the teachers are doing the same thing, where they're adding their assignments in Google Classroom, then they're gonna show, like let's say I have assignments here from history and English, and it would list if they were due today, it would list those assignments uh, the titles that are list as they are listed in their Google Classroom. So they have an automatic to-do list. And right now I have it set to all classes, but if they wanted to, they can switch to a specific class to see if their assignment is just for that one class. Um, so this is really a nice electronic to-do list that automatically generates for the student, making their life real easy. And in addition to that, any assignments that you see in here will be a live link. The last thing about, we're on the Android side right now, which means there's absolutely no security to this. If I walk away, even if I close this, so now even if I go back and open it up, it will open to my account because I am still signed in. So I wanted to make sure you knew anything that you sign into on this browser, you need to make sure you sign out before you leave because you don't want other people to have access to it, okay? Now, the quickest way to sign out is to do um, to be on the Google Classroom page because you have your picture, you just tap on it, and then you tap sign out, okay? If you navigated away from that and you don't have that tab up anymore, just hit plus, and either you go to your bookmarks like I showed you earlier with the three dots, or if you happen to have it showing here, just tap your Google Classroom, you just tap your name, and sign out. It's as simple as that. And then when I come back in the morning, if I was the last one to use it, when I open up Chrome again, it'll be on this page. If you use Google Chrome and sign into it, you'll probably have more access um, to YouTube links and things like that because it knows you're a teacher, a staff member. So you'll have more access to things than if you're not signed in. So a lot of times when you go to the browser here, people will try to get to something and it'll be like, it's not working, I can't play YouTube or whatever. Um, want that stuff to work better, use your Google Chrome and sign into it. Keeping your password secure either by 
Using these little tricks, you use your body to hide the keyboard once you shrink it down, or using the wireless keyboard. Some of you have an actual keyboard that you plugged in. Um, all those things would work to help you with security. The other thing you need to remember is this is not a personal device. So anytime you sign into an account on here, don't save your passwords and sign out. To use Screen Lock, you'll open the app and then it's going to ask you, no password set, would you like to set one now? So you can cancel if you don't want to set one or you could tap set password and set. And if we all use the same format, then we can have Screen Lock automatically turned on in all the rooms, like anybody who wants to turn on can turn it on with no worries. Um, so if you want to use the standard, the standard I was thinking would be to use the room number and then add a zero at the end. So right now I'm in room four. So I would put zero, zero, four, zero. Um, and then I need to confirm it. Zero, zero, four, zero. And click OK. And then the password has been set. At this point, I can change it or clear it or just go back to my normal work. So if you do open Screen Lock and you don't know what the password is, you can easily clear it by taking a remote for the clear touch and pressing the input button, then pressing zero, two, one, four. And that actually takes the password off of Screen Lock altogether. So you can now go and enter a new password. If it's not on the front here, let me show you how to get it to the front. If you notice down here in the lower right corner, there's the nine dots representing the menu of the clear touch. If you tap that, you can see that uh, screen lock is on here. It's on this one. It's over here. Just look through the list. Any shortcut that you want on the front screen, just like on your phone, you would hold your finger down on the app and now you can drag it to where you want. If you have an app on your home screen that you don't want, you hold your finger on the app and then you drag it up here to where it says remove. That was a little tricky for turns red, it'll take it off the screen. Be careful you don't lock other people out. Only use during the day. Don't lock it and leave it locked overnight because if somebody comes from the outside because they have a presentation or something, you want to let them use the panel. You don't want to be locked on them. Standard format and log out of all apps before you leave the building. I just want to go over this toolbar right here. This red button at the top sends you back one thing. So if I hit backwards, it sends me back to the last thing I was on. Okay. I hit it again, it goes back one. Just keeps going back one page. Home button sends me to the main screen. The purple button, I love it, shows you everything that you have open. So now if you have your Google Classroom open, and then you have Canvas, and then you have another app, and you want to switch back and forth, you just hit that purple little circle, and you can switch right to the other app very quickly during class and have multiple things set up. You can also close everything one at a time, or you can close it all. This green is the canvas. It turns it into a whiteboard, easy to use. Go ahead and play with it. So you've got, you know, your pencil, your eraser, you can change colors. It's just, it's just touching. If you want to use the pens that came with, they're just a piece of plastic with a rubber tip. They're not really anything special. There's no batteries, unless you have one of those fancy boards with the table that you know, the adjustable stand. Um, these are the pens that you have. The only thing exciting about these is they're, they do have a magnet inside, so you can just score them. Wait a little picture of the pen. Oh, this cool. next thing, so now this is important. This next thing is a pen. And when I tap it, it takes it a minute to come up, but eventually the, the toolbar for the pen comes up. This pen is not the canvas. This pen is going to allow me to write on top of my screen anywhere I am. You can use your overlay pen to annotate anything that happens to be showing on the clear touch screen. So where can I find it? You go over to the menu 
and the pen is the blue circle with the pen inside. That's your overlay pen. When you click on that, what's happening is the clear touch just took a screenshot of its screen and it gave you a pen to work with. And now you can do whatever you want to the screen. And when you're done, you can erase, you can change color, you could save it if you wanted, you could hit clean, it'll get rid of everything at once. Um, and when you're done writing over the screen, you click close. So you can have anything open, you can have your Google Classroom open, you can have a website open, and you'll be able to write on top of that screen and annotate and help kids focus on what you've been trying to get them to see. One thing that you must notice though, is when that overlay pen is turned on, this is now a screenshot, it's not your actual screen. So if I was in, if I wanted to open something, see, Chrome won't open because all I'm doing is writing with red marker on it. You have to close it in order to get your clear touch to be active again. So now that I closed it, I can now open something on the screen. Now remember this overlay pen is different from Canvas. So if you have Canvas open, it also has a pen and ability to write. Looks almost the same, but they are um, not the same. So in order to, let's say I open my pen here, I'm writing. If I open this pen at the same time, I just took a screenshot of Canvas. And if I write on this and then close that pen, the stuff disappears. And when I open the pen back up, it's going to take a new screenshot. So that stuff is gone. So you want to be careful. This pen is an overlay tool. It can open when you're in Canvas, but you want to make sure that if you're in Canvas, you're using the Canvas pen and not the overlay tool. All right. You can also save that as a picture if you want. All right, but that is different. So we have two different things here. The green one with the, it looks like a G, but it's a C canvas, turns it into a whiteboard. Whereas this pen, it's an overlay tool, allows you to write on anything that you have on the screen. The tools, we already showed you the countdown, but you also have the spotlight, which you can make bigger and smaller. Don't use Air Class, it doesn't work with our setup, so ignore it. Two little buttons that I just hit right here. That again for this one. That allows you to get this to call up, but you can also swipe from the bottom. And this is how you switch between different things. Right now we're on the Android side. Volume. You can use your remote control or you can use this. And that was my last thing. 